Hi everyone, welcome to English with Sepid. In this series, we are gonna learn American English file. Let's go! American English file has different levels from starter to the advanced. In this series, we are gonna work on the upper intermediate level. So if you watch our videos, you are gonna reach upper intermediate level. In this book, you can find good grammatical points, vocabulary, useful vocabulary, and you can also find some reading text. These reading texts can help you read better and try to improve your reading skills. Plus, you can find some listening parts. These are really important to listen. And you can also find some grammatical points. The grammatical points are also of great significance. So follow us, watch these videos and learn. Now, let's go to the first unit. In this book, you can find 10 units. Each unit consists of part A and part B. We are on unit one, part A, okay? One A, and the page is four. So let's take a look at the title, okay? The title says mood food mood food okay so we are going to talk about the food and their effect on our mood okay for instance when i eat chocolate i feel really happy okay so there are absolutely some food that uh, make you happy they can make you depressed sometimes they can make you even angry and uh, we can just uh, learn what type of food are like this if we go ahead and go toward the reading. But first of all, we are gonna go for the vocabulary section. So take a look at part one. One, vocabulary, food and cooking. We're gonna talk about food and cooking. There's a quiz here. This quiz is really sweet one. Okay, let's do it together. And it's a kind of warm up here for us to be ready to get through the better parts of this book. So, can you think of one red fruit? Can you think of one red fruit? So, red fruit, red fruit. Strawberry, yeah, strawberry. Apple, there are a lot of them. So, one yellow fruit. So one yellow fruit, let me think, banana or even lemon. One green fruit. So green fruit, green fruit, cucumber, cucumber or green gauge is really sour and very tasty. So let's go to the second question of this quiz. Can you think of two kinds of food? Two kinds of food that some people are allergic to. So, I've heard that people are allergic to the food containing fava beans. So, fava beans can be allergic. Most of the people are allergic to that. So, and another one, and also I've heard that some people are allergic to peanuts, okay? So, if for example, something um, has or contains peanuts, they break out in a rash, okay? They grow red spots on their skins. So, number three. So, take a look at the third question. Can you think of three kinds of food three kinds of food that come from milk. So, three kinds of food that come from milk. There are a lot of food actually, so 
Let's just think of that. Actually, in my culture, we have a type of food, okay? Uh, we put rice and milk together. It's a kind of dessert, okay? So, and um, it's very delicious. So we call that in Farsi, we call that shirberenj. There are a lot of uh, food like this. And you can tell me some food which are in your culture and they are made from milk. So let's go to number four. Can you think of four vegetables that you can put in a salad? So vegetables that we can put in a salad. Let me think of them. Mm, lettuce. So it's one of the vegetables that we put in the salad. The second one is carrot. Okay, we put carrot into the salad and broccoli. So broccoli is the next one. Actually, you have different tastes and you come from different cultures and you can also tell us what you put in a salad. So next one, number five says that, can you think of five containers that you can buy food in? So we can buy food in paper cups or uh, paper bowls, if you have just paid attention, or they can just pack the food. We can buy the food in the packs. And there are a lot of things, disposable dishes, okay? Disposable dishes are dishes that we can use only once, okay? So because they are made out of plastic and uh, paper like this. So can you think of things that people sometimes have for breakfast? Okay, so in my culture, we usually have cheese, bread, walnut, and there are also different things, okay? So you can think of the items that you eat in your culture. So that was about the food quiz. Now, let's turn to part B of the vocabulary section. Part A was a small quiz. Right now we are on part B. Part B is gonna teach us some good and new vocabulary. So, page 152. We are gonna turn to page 152 as it is mentioned here. It's about food and cooking. Let's turn to this page. So, here there are some food groups. You, you see some categories. They are categorized and I will read this food, the name of this food for you. And you are going to guess which vocabulary belongs to which number, okay? So you can see the pictures here. Let's go. Match the verse and pictures. Fish and seafood. Fish and seafood. So we are going to talk about the food that come from the sea. So the first one is crab. It is here, you see that, okay? Crab, it's a kind of seafood. So try to find the second one in the picture. Mussels, mussels, okay. And the third one is salmon. Which picture shows the salmon? Salmon is a kind of fish. Next one is shrimp. Shrimp. So which number in the photo can be a shrimp? Actually shrimps. And squid. Squid. So, tuna. 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 Okay. So, 
Let's go to the second category. The second category shows the different types of meat. You can see variety types of meat here. So let's go. The first one, beef. So which number can be beef? Chicken. Chicken. You might have found it. Duck. Duck. Is clear? Lamb. B is silent. Lamb. I guess that you found that too. Pork. Pork. So that's the end of meat. Okay, meat category. Let's go to the third category. Okay, the last category is about fruits and vegetables. So we are going to talk about the fruits and vegetables, my favorite part. Let's go. So take a look at the photo and tell me which word belongs to which picture. Beat. Beat. Beet has a very beautiful color, especially when it is cooked. Cabbage. Cabbage. Cherries. Cherries. Cucumber. Cucumber. Eggplant, eggplant, or in British words, we can say aubergine, aubergine. So aubergine is synonym for eggplant. Eggplant is used by Americans commonly, but aubergine is used by British people commonly. So grapes, grapes. Green beans, green beans. We know that is green, but which vegetable it is? Lemon, lemon. Mango, mango, my favorite fruit. Melon, melon. Peach, peach, if it is juicy, it is really delicious, peach. Pear, pear, raspberries, raspberries, red pepper, red pepper. And the last one, zucchini, zucchini. And the British one is courgette. So you can also say zucchini or courgette. So let's see. Here it says that you can listen and check. If you have the files, you can also listen and check these parts at home and here. Are there any things in the list that you love, hate, have never tried? Okay, so are there any uh, types of food that you have never tried? For instance, I have never tried duck. I've never eaten. So the thing that I love, cherries, raspberries, I love them, and mango about the fruit. So, about, the, about something that you hate. I think there isn't anything here that I hate, okay? All of them are good enough to be eaten. So, here says, are there any other kinds of fish, meat, or fruits and vegetables that are very common in your country? So, 
in my country about uh, uh, I can say that we use a lot of basil okay it's a kind of vegetable that we use a lot okay we can just uh, eat it with kebab it's really delicious basil and I think that in your country there are a lot of fruit vegetable or meat that you like like us and you eat them now let's turn to part two on page 152 okay these are some vocabulary about cooking so let's go again i will just read the vocabulary and you're going to tell me which photo belongs to which vocab below okay so boiled boiled is number four boiled it means for example we put the food in water and uh, we let it cook so that item is boiled like boiled eggs boiled potatoes so let's go to the next vocab roasted roasted so which one roasted think about that you might have found okay and now we are going to go to the third vocab baked 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 we put it in the oven cool so grilled grilled next fried fried very delicious fried and steamed steamed okay so here on part b it says that how do you prefer these things to be cooked okay so for example about eggs so we can boil the eggs and we can poach the eggs these are delicious or we can fry the eggs so which one do you like about potatoes we can bake the potatoes we can fry the potatoes chicken we can roast the chicken we can grill the chicken even for a healthier lifestyle we can boil the chicken these are possible or fry the chicken it's really delicious so fish but the fish we can grill it again in my country we fry that it's not healthy what we do and uh, even we can roast it or bake it these are possible ways of cooking so right now you're going to tell me what type of cooking in these items you prefer so let's go to phrasal verbs there is a box here this box is very important here is going to teach you some phrasal verbs learn these phrasal verbs connected with food and diet so these phrasal verbs that here we are going to learn are connected or are related to food and diet diet means eating habit okay so let's go i eat out a lot i eat out a lot because i don't really have time to cook so i eat out a lot because i don't have really enough time to cook so eat out means to eat in restaurants instead of saying i eat in restaurants you can say i eat out so opposite of this verb is eat in eat in it means eat at home next i'm trying to cut down on coffee right now i'm trying to cut down on coffee right now i'm only having one cup at breakfast so cut down on something it means have less reduce the amount of something that you eat i need to 
cut down on sugar. It means I have to reduce the amount of sugar that I eat daily or I take daily. So the third example says, the doctor told me I had very high cholesterol and that I should completely cut out all high fat cheese and dairy products from my diet. So cut out, it means eliminate, to completely put aside, okay? We call that cut out. So for instance, if somebody has diabetes, diabetes means having high blood sugar. So they have to cut out sugar they should eliminate okay they have to put it aside and no longer take it so that was all about the phrasal verbs there were three phrasal verbs that we learned the first one eat out eat at a restaurant the second one cut down on it means to reduce the amount of something and the third one is cut out. It means eliminate or no longer use something. So try to use these phrasal verbs instead of some elementary vocabulary. Now let's turn to the next page. Now, we go back to page four, okay? 1A, mood food. Right now we are on part C vocabulary section part c there are some vocabulary here these are some adjectives we can use these adjectives along with the food so the first adjective is canned for, for instance like the beans okay so we have the beans in cans we can say this is canned food so canned beans because they are in the can fresh fresh for instance we buy some food okay which are picked which are just picked or which just have been picked so they are very fresh so we call that fresh fruit or fresh vegetables next one is frozen frozen so if we put the food in the freezer like the fish like the meat okay like some vegetables these are frozen okay frozen beans frozen vegetables frozen meat like this so low fat a type of food that has the less fat or oil in it so we call it low fat low fat milk low fat milk raw raw means a food which is not cooked so we call that raw food for instance i love eating raw vegetables in salad raw vegetables spicy spicy means full of spices okay like indian food they are really delicious, but full of spices. Takeout. Takeout means a type of food that we buy from out, okay, from a restaurant or from a catering center. So we buy that and bring in a pack, okay? We bring them in a pack and uh, we consume them. We call it takeout food. For, for instance, like take out pizza. There are a lot of food like this. So right now we are done with the vocabulary section. We are gonna turn to pronunciation. Pay attention to the pronunciation part about vowel sounds. So vowel sounds are really important, as you know, in English, and we have to pronounce them correctly. Let's go. So the first one is the sound of e, okay, e, squid, squid, chicken, chicken, spicy, this is I, 
is out. Grilled. Grilled. So these are correct. This pronunciation belongs to e pronunciation. So second one is e. E. Okay. So beef. Steamed. Beans. Breakfast. So this is out. This is odd one out. You have to cross it out. Okay. So next one is a. Ah, the pronunciation. The sign belongs to a ah, pronunciation. Grapes. This is odd one out. Yeah. Okay. This is out. Grapes. A. Next one. Salmon. Correct. Lamb. Again, this is correct. Cabbage. Again, this is the sound of a. Ah. Next one is R. R. Migraine. Migraine. So, is correct. Carton. Carton. Jar. Jar. Warm. This is the odd one out. Warm. Okay? Or. It's not R. So, the second column, number five, the pronunciation is A. Ah, A. Ah. Sausage. Sausage. Roast. O. Oh, okay? So, this is out. Chocolate. Correct. Chocolate. And box. Box. So, number six is or, or, pork, pork, fork, fork, boiled, boiled, oy, okay, it's not or, so this is out, pour, Poor, correct. So the next pronunciation is u. U. Okay, short u. Cook. Cook. Sugar. Sugar. Pudding. Pudding. Food. Food. So this is odd one out. Number eight. Ooh. Spoon. Spoon. Zucchini. Zucchini. Fruit. Fruit. Duck. Duck. This is odd one out. You can also listen and check. So we cross them out, cross the odd ones out and pay attention to the pronunciations. Let's turn to the next part. On page four, there is part three. It consists of listening and speaking part. According to what you learned on part one and two, you can answer these questions. Okay, so these are about the speaking parts. You can answer them, test yourself, see whether you can answer these questions very well or not. Actually, I know that you are going to answer them really well. And also, there is a kind of listening part below. You can listen to the track which is concerning this part and you can answer the questions of this part. You are going to say, speaker A, is talking about which question above, okay? For example, says that speaker A is talking about the question four. Question four here says, when you eat out, do you usually order meat, fish, or vegetarian? Okay, so this consists of this. And you can uh, just listen and answer for B, speaker B, speaker C, D, and E. Now, Let's turn to 
Next page, page five. There is a very important part here. We are going to go for the reading section. Reading section, just take a look at the title of that, Mood Food. We are going to see what type of effects or impacts can the food we eat have on our mood and spirits. So, before going to the reading section, let's go to part four reading here. A. Are the foods in the list carbohydrates or proteins? With a partner, think of four more kinds of food for each category. So, let's go. Cake. Carbohydrate. Okay. So, chicken. Protein. Pasta. Carbohydrate. Salmon. Protein. Now here, we answer this question. Here says that part B, with a partner, answer the questions below with either carbohydrates or proteins. What kind of food do you think it is better to eat? Okay, so let's go. What kind of food do you think is better to eat for lunch if you have an important exam or meeting? What type of food? is necessary, the food which, which contain carbohydrates or proteins. Okay, so you're gonna just answer this question. What kind of food do you think it is better to eat for breakfast? For breakfast, what kind of food? Carbs or protein? Now, what kind of food do you think it is better to eat for your evening meal? Carbs or protein? And what kinds of food do you think it is better to eat if you are feeling stressed? If you are feeling stressed, what type of food? Carbohydrates, proteins or other categories? You can think of other categories, for instance, like um, Sugar about, for example, the different categories that we have, grains, there are a lot of them, fruits, vegetables, like this. So let's go to part C. Look at the title of the article. What do you think it means? Read the article once to find out and to check your answers to B. Okay, here we just guess the answers on part B. But in the article, you can find the answers to these questions, okay? The right answers. Well, you are the one who is going to just find them out. But I'm going to just read the text for you and try to just, uh, we're going to try to understand the text together. Uh, here, it says that, look at the title, Mood Food, okay? So the title is Mood Food. We understand that. We're going to talk about the effect of food on our mood. I told you beforehand. Okay, so let's go to part D before going to the text. Here it says, read the article again, then with a partner say in your own words why the following people are mentioned. Give as much as information as you can. Okay, so on part C, Okay, it refers to part B. You are going to answer part B and part D based on the text. So, part B and part D are based on text. After we've just read them, you can answer them. Here it says part E. Find adjectives in the article for the verbs and nouns in the list. What's the difference between the two adjectives made from stress? Okay. Here again is based on the text. After we read the text, we can do part E either. Okay, so let's go to the text. I will read it for you and you're going to listen carefully in order to find out the information needed on part B and part D. Okay, afterwards we can do part E together. So let's go. Mood food. We live in a stressful world, and daily life can sometimes make us feel tired, stressed, or depressed. Some people go to the doctor for help, others try alternative therapies, 
but the place to find a cure could be somewhere completely different, in the kitchen. Dr. Paul Clayton, a food expert from Middlesex University, says the brain is affected by what you eat and drink, just like every other part of your body. Certain types of food contain substances that affect how you think and feel. For example, food that is high in carbohydrates can make us feel more relaxed. It also makes us feel happy. Research has shown that people on diets often begin to feel a little depressed after two weeks because they are eating fewer carbohydrates. On the other hand, food that is rich in protein makes us feel awake and focused. Research has shown that school children who eat a high-protein breakfast often do better at school than children whose breakfast is lower in protein. Also, eating the right kind of meal at lunch can make a difference. If you have an exam in the afternoon or a business meeting where you need to make some quick decisions, in an experiment for a TV show, two chess players, both former champions, had different meals before playing each other. Paul had a plate of prosciutto and salad, full of protein from the red meat, and his opponent, Terry, had pasta with a creamy sauce, full of carbohydrates. In the chess match, Terry felt sleepy and took much longer than Paul to make decisions about what moves to make. The experiment was repeated several times with the same result. Another powerful mood food could become a replacement for some medications doctors prescribe for stress. In a study, Swiss researchers discovered that eating one dark chocolate candy bar about 1.4 ounces had beneficial effects on highly stressed people. Not only did eating the dark chocolate help reduce stress, it was also shown to improve mood and reduce high blood pressure. Why does chocolate make people less stressed? First, it causes the body to reduce the level of the stress hormones, cortisol. Second, it reduces the fight or flight hormones, a hormone that makes people want to start a fight or run away when they are very stressed. In addition, it contains other compounds that lower blood pressure and improve your mood. These three things, along with its delicious taste, make chocolate a powerful mood changer. So, let's turn to the box below. Mood food. What do experts say? Blueberries and cocoa can raise concentration levels for up to five hours. Food that is high in protein helps your brain to work more efficiently. For relaxation and to sleep better, eat carbohydrates, dark green vegetables. For example, cabbage and spinach and oil fish, um, for example, salmon, eaten regularly can help to fight depression. So that was all about the text. Now let's turn to part E. So you, uh, you have to answer part B and D according to the text. And here on part E, find adjectives in the articles for the verbs and nouns in the list. What's the difference between the two adjectives made from stress? Okay, stress has two adjectives. The first adjective is stressed, stressed. For instance, if a human wants to say that I feel that I have stressed, that person can say I am stressed. It means I feel the stress in my body, in my mind. But stressful is the second adjective which is derived from the word stress. So stressful means the situation which gives you the stress. For instance, the class is stressful, okay? The competition is stressful. I cannot say I am stressful, okay? So, because if I want to express that I have stress, I should say I am stressed. 
but the class is stressful like this the situation my job is which one stressed or stressful stressful okay so the next verb is relax relax you can say relaxing for example some places okay the coffee shop is relaxing or i am relaxed it means i feel relaxed so wake awake she is awake sleep sleepy sleepy is the adjective i am sleepy it means i feel like sleeping power powerful powerful is the adjective benefit beneficial beneficial you can find all of them in the text that i have read okay so here it says that on part f ask and answer the questions with a partner right now you're gonna work on these questions okay based on the things that you've read you can answer these questions and put the things that you've learned into practice don't forget to practice because it's really important now let's turn to part six on page seven grammar part the grammar part is about simple present and present continuous about action and non-action verbs we are gonna get to understand what they are talking about and what where these tenses are used so these are really important the grammar bank here is highlighted in blue okay so the grammar is explained completely on page 132 and i'm gonna tell you the most important points about these two tenses here so let's go to the board simple present tense and present continuous as you know we use do or does in simple present tense and uh, for she he or it we use s okay we add s to our verb but for present continuous we use am is r plus ing form so you already know them but here we're going to talk about their usage so let's go the first usage the simple present tense has is about the routine okay so routine means the things that we do on automatic pilot okay we always do these things we call them routine so these routines are general we generally do them so let's go for instance we eat out once a month we eat out once a month it means it's a kind of routine for instance i go to work every day so it's a kind of routine in my life this is one of the usages of simple present tense the second usage is about the habits okay so if you're talking about the habits we say this uh, the things that we do and uh, we are accustomed to doing so for instance she usually has cereal for breakfast she usually has cereal for breakfast you can use always usually often sometimes rarely never okay these are some adverbs that you can use in order to talk about your habits so the third usage of that is about the permanent actions permanent actions so it means something that is always true in your life okay like i work in a bank so it's a kind of fact in that person's life she lives in the u.s it's a kind of fact and it's a kind of general situation in a person's life it's a kind of permanent situation it never changes okay i have two brothers again it's a kind of permanent situation so the next part is concerning action and non-action verbs i'm gonna mention them but before that let's go to the usage of present 
continuous. Okay, a present continuous is talking about the situations that are happening now. Okay, so now and they are specific. They are not general. They don't always or often happen. Okay, let's see. They are having breakfast now. Right now, they are having breakfast. So the things that are happening just now. Or for example, now I am teaching English. Let's go to the second usage of that. Annoying habits. So annoying habits. Here we said that in simple present tense, we have the habits, normal habits. But here we have annoying habits, you know, the habits that we don't really like in people. So for instance, she is always slurping. It means she's always drinking something noisily with a lot of noise. So she's always slurping. In this case, you should put always between. Am is R and ing form, okay? In order to talk about people's annoying habits, okay? We say, she's always slurping. He's always talking loudly, okay, like this. So we are criticizing that person. And the third usage of that is about the temporary actions. This is temporary. It means it's not permanent, okay? It doesn't always exist in our life. It's temporary. She is living with her aunt for the time being. For the time being shows that this action is temporary, okay? So I can say I am working on a project for the time being, it means for a short period of time. For instance, for two or three months, okay? Or for a week, like this. She is living with her aunt for the time being. It means for now, like this. So let's go to the action and non-action verbs. This section is really important to understand. Here it says, action verbs are the normal verbs that you can see. For instance, I... I work, okay? She studies. They are laughing. You can see these actions, okay? They can be seen. They are visible, okay? So, I teach. Teaching is something that you can see. I smile. Again, you can see that. But there are some verbs that you cannot see because they show their your feelings or they can show your thoughts, your senses. So we call them non-action verbs. Non-action verbs are normally used with simple present tense, okay? But action verbs can be used with present continuous as well. So non-action verbs like agree, be, believe, belong, depend, forget, okay? The verbs that are not seen, okay? For instance, think, love, hate, you cannot see them because they are the thoughts or our feelings, like this, here, okay, here, like this. So these are non-action verbs. So we can use action and non-action verbs, both of them, with simple present tense, but we only use action verbs with the present continuous tense, okay? So action verbs are possible in both of them, but non-action verbs are commonly or normally possible in simple present tense. You know, it's very rare to say, I am believing. We normally say, I believe, okay? I think she, for example, belongs. It depends, like this. So that was all about this grammatical point. That's the end of 1A. For the next session, we're gonna work on 1B. See you.